So what are the root causes of hair loss? Well, the number one cause of hair loss is androgenic alopecia, which is commonly known as male pattern baldness. Now, women can get it too, and we'll talk about how that works when they have too high levels of male hormones, which is not uncommon in women who have insulin resistance or prediabetes or PCOS. Now, this, this condition of male pattern baldness is driven by genetic predisposition and also sensitivity to a hormone called DHT or dihydrotestosterone, and it results in gradual hair thinning and hair loss. So what is DHT? Well, DHT is a type of androgen or male hormone, sex hormone, along with testosterone that has a lot to do with hair growth, particularly on the scalp. Now, testosterone is converted into DHT by an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. Now, 5-alpha reductase is an enzyme that's activity is highest in the tissues such as the prostate gland, skin, liver, and hair follicles. And that's why, for example, drugs for the prostate, which we keep for enlarged prostate, which can be from high DHT like, like uh, finasteride, is also used for male pattern baldness. So works for your scalp and your prostate. <laughs> DHT stimulates hair growth, but can also lead to hair loss when levels are too high. Now, how does DHT cause hair loss? Well, DHT attaches the hair follicle receptors. And over time, the DHT shrinks the hair follicles, making them smaller and weaker. Now, this leads to hair thinning and to hair loss as the follicles grow kind of sleepy and dormant. Now, hair follicles on the scalp are more sensitive to this hormone DHT than the follicles on other parts of the body, for example, your chest or your, under your arms or pubic hair. And that's why hair loss is more common on the head than any other part of the body. Now, in men, high DHT levels results in hair loss, typically seen as receding hairlines and thinning at the crown of the head, you know, on the top. In women, DHT can cause thinning across the scalp, uh, also particularly along the part where you part your hair. But it doesn't usually cause total baldness like it does in men. Now, lowering DHT or blocking its action can help slow or stop hair loss. And we're going to talk about lots of ways to do that in the episode, both natural, dietary, supplements, and even medication. Now, what causes increased levels of this hormone or DHT? Well, hormone imbalances such as high testosterone can cause it. Well, Wait a minute, I thought high testosterone was a good thing, you might be thinking. Well, in men, yes. Testosterone is man's primary sex hormone and is associated with strength, performance, vitality, cognitive function, muscle mass. And women also produce testosterone. And it's involved in fertility and reproductive health, sex drive, bone density, muscle health for women as well as men. Now, when testosterone becomes too high, it can have negative consequences. So what causes then testosterone to become too high? The main driver for women, is insulin resistance and obesity, the belly fat. Basically, that fat around your middle is a driver of inflammation, of hormonal dysregulation, and leads to a condition called androgen dominance, where you have more male sex hormones. That's not a good thing. And that, that androgen dominance is a common phenomena in women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, which is the number one cause of infertility in women. It affects up to 10% of women. So what exactly is androgen dominance anyway? Well, it's androgen dominance or hyperandrogenism means that testosterone, DHT or dihydrotestosterone and another hormone called DHEA is high. Now this has negative effects on fertility that can cause a lot of other symptoms like PMS and heavy bleeding and all kinds of weird symptoms, but it also causes hair thinning and hair loss and also causes unwanted hair growth in other places like your chin or your belly or your chest, which is not fun for women. In men, high insulin can lead to higher free testosterone levels. Now, that might seem like a good thing, but insulin resistance is also linked to inflammation. It's linked to heart disease. It's linked to obesity, to cancer, and many other chronic diseases. So not a good thing overall. The cons outweigh the pros. So what's going on here? Well, despite high free testosterone, most men with insulin resistance experience low total testosterone. So what does that mean? This is largely due to the impact of insulin on something called sex hormone binding globulin. So what does sex hormone bi binding globulin do, or SHBG? Well, it binds to sex hormones and makes them unavailable for your body to use. Sort of like the storage, like your bank account for your hormones, instead of the cash in your pocket, which is like the free hormone. So high insulin levels decrease sex hormone binding globulin levels. So when sex hormone binding globulin levels are low, less testosterone is bound and more remains free. When more free testosterone is available, that's when it gets converted to DHT by this enzyme we talked about, 5-alpha reductase. Well, that leads to more hair loss, and that's not a good thing. So what is this 5-alpha reductase? Well, it's a, an enzyme that converts free testosterone 
to dihydrotestosterone. Obesity and excess body fat, which is really common these days, upregulates this enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. So you get more conversion to DHT. So excess body fat is often associated with insulin resistance and prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, and it can stimulate this enzyme. So high insulin levels from high sugar and starch diets can stimulate the enzyme 5-alpha reductase, and that increases the production of DHT, which then leads to hair loss. So you see how it goes. Basically, being overweight, having belly fat is not good for men or women. Now women, the research shows that women with PCOS have higher levels of this enzyme activity as well. So that's not good. So what else increases this enzyme function, which is necessary, but you don't want it overactive, right? Stress. Stress will trigger the release of cortisol, and that targets and damages your hair follicles. So many women in their 20s and 30s start losing their hair due to stress. Also, sleep deprivation can cause this. It's another form of stress. Poor diet. I mentioned sugar and starch. That's probably the biggest reason for hair loss in women is sugar and starch. And I would say gluten's probably next on the list. When you eat too much sugar and starch, it causes accumulation of belly fat. That belly fat leads to insulin resistance. That leads to the high levels of 5-alpha reductase. That leads to higher levels of DHT. That leads to hair loss on the scalp and hair growth on the face. So you don't want that. So if you're next time you're eating a sugar or ice cream, just think of that. Okay. <laughs> Another reason for uh, increasing activity of 5-alpha reductase is a deficiency in zinc. Now, zinc is a mineral that's a natural inhibitor of this enzyme, 5-alpha reductase. And, and the zinc deficiency, if you have you know, low zinc, and it's not uncommon in America to have low zinc because we process diet and it doesn't have a lot of minerals in it. And that can lead to higher levels of DHT due to this uninhibited enzyme activity. Also, as you get older, men's total testosterone levels go down, but the dihydrotestosterone levels remain relatively stable or increase due to changes in this enzyme activity and hormonal metabolism. So that's the reason why older men may experience some more noticeable hair loss, even as overall levels of testosterone. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here.